However, in uh, when when we when we change this to double to polar coordinates in double integrals, we were able to compute those integrals. And a new uh, there's two new systems that we're going to learn, which is the cylindrical coordinates and the spherical coordinates. Okay. What about cylindrical coordinates? So those are used for uh, for triple integrals and are going to be very similar to. Um, it's, it's pretty much it pretty much the same as polar coordinates, but in 3D. So what do we have again in 2D? In 2D, we have a point x, y that were represented as r theta. That is, that point was represented in terms of a distance from the origin which is r, and the angle that forms with the positive x-axis. So that was the, uh, the whole thing about polar coordinates. And well, you know the formulas for conversions, you know those come from creating this right triangle, r cosine theta, because for, for the x component, r, y, r sine theta for the y component, you know, all those conversions. However, in three dimensions, because really a cylinder is nothing other than a circle uh, and extended vertically or horizontally or well depending on the direction of where we are extended such, extending such, such a solid. So we're going to have the following. Uh, so again, this is the xy plane and we will represent a point well, actually, this will only be the shadow of the point, right? This will be the shadow because the actual point will be this one right here. You know, it's going to be given from the origin to that point. And in this case, well, what are we going to see in the XY plane? In the XY plane, we will still see this angle theta and this length r. However, the height, it's still going to be c, all right? It's not going to change to another crazy symbol, uh, but that's not going to be the same for spherical coordinate. That's going to be something else, all right? So we're going to go, so we went from x, y to r theta. This time we're going to go from x, y, z to r theta and z right so the z doesn't change the z is the same what changes is x and y which is going to be the radius and the angle all right so well so the definition here the formulas if you will i mean check them out they're exactly the same so if we go from cylindrical to rectangular we get x and y by multiplying the radius by the cosine or the sine of the angle, well, depending on the component, z remains z. And the same formulas are the same to go from, from rectangular coordinates to cylindrical coordinates, that is, the formula for r, which is really the Pythagorean theorem, and the tangent, which is the tangent function, which relates the opposite and the adjacent side, Find the arc tangent to get the angle. Well, in some cases for like weird angles, we would, we, we would use that formula. But in some cases, we may get points for which we can easily see what the angle is. So in, some, in such cases, uh, I guess no need to show all the calculation because I mean, if it's, for example, like a triangle one, one, I mean, that's a 45 degree, degree angle. So you can just say 45 degree or pi over four or de well, depending on, on, on the on the location we're working at. And that's going to be like the first case, convert the rectangular coordinate 1, negative 1 to cylindrical coordinate. So, well, because the z is going to be the same, well, we already have, we already have uh, the first part of the, the first answer to this, that's a 4, all right? Z is not going to change. The only ones that change are x and y to become r and theta. 
So let's focus on only let's focus only on those only on those two. One and negative one. And again, it's like doing the XY projection or the projection in the XY plane. So let's see what's going on in the XY plane. So one, negative one, and we have this point right here. All right. And well, clearly it's a 45 degree angle. Well, in the negative direction, negative 45 or, or seven pi over four, either way. All right. So let me call it, have about negative pi over four to make it simpler. So, Theta equals negative pi over four. And well, so that's another answer, negative pi over four. What about the radius? So the radius, r squared equals x squared plus y squared. R is just, I mean, using the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, square root of x squared plus y squared, which is the square root of uh, one squared plus negative one squared. And that's the square root of two. All right. And of course, you might want to, you might recall that this this is not the unique way to represent points. In, I mean, like for those of you who were in my Calc two course, either in the summer or last spring, we represented these polar points as in more than one way. I mean because these angles right here, this theta is periodic, is 2 pi periodic, so we can add 2 pi and make this a 5 pi over 4. Mm, add another multiple of 2 pi, so that's uh, so like 17 pi over 4 or so, and we did some of them in the negative direction by subtracting 2 pi and subtracting 2 pi, so really you have infinitely many ways to represent these points. But, well, in this case, we're just going to do one, all right? Let's do another example. Let's convert this backwards to, so we, we are given a point in cylindrical coordinates. Let's convert it back into the X, Y, Z version of it, all right? So what do we have? Uh, Z doesn't change, that's fine. But in this case, X equals R cos theta and y equals r sine theta. That means, it, uh, in this case, r, which is three, cosine five pi over four, sine five pi over four. And well, cosine of five pi over four, I have that this one is, so it's the third quadrant, they're both negative, right? So that's gonna be, I need some space here. So that's going to be three times root of two over two, but actually negative and negative three root of two over two. So this point in rectangular coordinates corresponds to three root of two over two, comma, I mean rather negative, three root of two over two and negative five. All right. And of course, I mean, we will not just describe uh, points, rather order triples in the in the respective uh, systems. We will also describe regions as well. And you might remember how we played with equations x and y, substitute r cos theta, r sine theta, and come up with their corresponding versions in terms of r and theta. You know, we, we wrote those functions r as functions of theta. Well, in this case, we will have to describe this. Uh, well, in this case, r are going to be surfaces, not, um, not, curve, not just curves. But in some cases, it's important to see what's going on with the curve. So number one, we have this, uh, this surface, S R theta Z, where Z equals to two R, where R it's all numbers between zero and infinity. You know? so it's, uh, that's our condition here, it's our inequality. So they're asking us to sketch the graph of this. Well, how are we going to sketch the graph of this? Well, let's see. How about we give some values of R, all right? 
So starting with uh, r equals to zero, that's going to give us z equals to two times zero, which is zero. That is z equals to zero. R equals to one. Uh, so that's two. Uh, I mean, z equals to two times one, which is two. That's z equals to. I know it's like um, it's kind of simple in this case. That what what we're essentially doing, right? So um, wait. No, that, that's fine. For r equals to two. 2 times 2 equals to 4, z equals to 4. So what is this z equals to 0, z equals to 2, z equals to 4? These are horizontal planes. But really these horizontal planes, uh, instead of looking at the planes, we're going to look at this r equals 0, r equals 1, r equals to 2. So what's happening in, in, the, uh, in, the, x, in the x, y projection? So. Uh, R equals zero. Well, so here is where we need where we need to think about what is that R really meaning. And again, since we are in cylindrical coordinates, well, that cylinder is in a way some circle, right? And in this case, this R means radius equals to zero. So what what has a radius equals to zero? So basically, just the origin, right? There's nothing else. What about this r equals to 1? Doesn't that describe something that has a radius equals 1? In other words, a circle of radius 1. Okay. And well, so r equals to 2. That's something that contains a radius equals to 2. Well, that's a circle of radius 2. But well, that's the projection in the xy plane. However, in 3D, how is that? How is this going to look like? Well, hmm? it's going to look like a cone because really, uh, this point, the, the origin right here, okay, at the origin, so there's, there's a zero radius when z equals to zero, that is when the height is zero. And then we're going to have a circle of radius 1 when, when z equals to do 2. All right? So let's draw this. Okay? And then we're going to have a circle of radius 2 uh, when the height is z equals to 4. All right? And that's going to look... Oh, that didn't come out so well. All right, and that's going to be our cone here. All right. So we are, again, this is going to take us back in a way to these level curves. Remember those level curves? So we put them together with graphing and describing surfaces in cylindrical coordinates, okay? All right. So... Um, so this cylindrical coordinate will be used mostly to evaluate integrals involving surfaces that look like cones, spheres, and cylinders. That's because we have this x squared plus y squared, you know, in our integrand or in our region that we define. And well, very, more often than not, if we try to evaluate those integrals, remember like the, the crazy integrals we evaluated between the cone and the sphere before, how big it was? Well, the problem is not the size of the integral. The problem is that uh, the minute we try to compute that integral, you know what? Let me go back. I think it's worth to go back to... Uh, so, okay. Try to integrate dz in this case, right? That's going to be, uh, okay, the, the double integral. I'm not going to write the whole thing. So, double integral, limits, limits, and that's the upper limit minus the lower limit. That is the square root of 40 minus x squared minus y squared minus the square root of x squared plus y squared. And then do this one uh, with respect to y and then with respect x. Okay. 
Do you see the problem with this? I mean, we just got as far as evaluating only the first iteration of the integral, right? The one with respect to z. But here, if we want to try, if we want to evaluate the integral of these two functions with respect to y, do you see what we're missing? We're missing a factor of y which sends the u, the u part of the problem. So that's the issue with this integral. That's why we didn't went beyond the setup in the previous section. Just set it up, but now with cylindrical coordinates, we will have means to compute this integral in a lot simpler way, all right? So, so that's the advantage in this case. So coming back to triple integrals, And all right, uh, where were we at? Oh, wait a minute, I went back to the same document. Oh, here it is. All right, so here is how we are going to describe in general, you know. So, this dv, this element of volume, will become r dz dr d theta. That might look familiar from polar coordinates, that r dr d theta, it's exactly the same. The only thing we're adding extra is just that dz. All right, and what are we going to integrate? We will integrate a function of r theta and z, or rather r and cosine, r and sine, or r and z, or, or rather z, the limits for the first integration, z depends on all these variables, r and theta. The second variable, the second integration with respect r, r functions because r changes with respect the angle. And the theta is just a constant, that's between alpha and beta, or between a and b, it doesn't matter. Usually we use alpha and beta for angles, right? Especially for the theta. For phi and, and rho, we're gonna use something else. In, in spherical coordinates. All right, so let's have a look at one example here. Uh, use cylindrical coordinates to find the volume of the solid bounded by the paraboloid. Z equals nine minus X squared minus Y squared and the XY plane. All right, so that XY plane will be the bottom, which is just this XY plane means uh, whenever you see this, this uh, this xy plane thing, that means z equals to zero, all right? Again, that's because that's gonna take us back to functions of multiple variables. This, are, this is the xy trace of the surface, if you will, all right? So that's in a way, in a cryptic way, if you will, it's telling us that the lower limit in the z direction is, is zero, all right? And okay, what's next? All right, so where do we start at? So we have a solid, we have a surface. Let's see what's going on in the XY plane. That is the projection in two dimensions. So projection in the XY plane. So that makes, again, z equals to zero. I know, I will, I, I'm repeating this uh, more than once because usually that's like the trickiest part of the problem, which is really where to start, right? So, and uh, so that's gonna make uh, nine minus x squared minus y squared equals to zero. <coughs> And x squared plus y squared equals to nine. Well, what's this? It's a circle, right? Circle of radius three. <coughs> so it's a circle of radius three. circle 
circle of radius 3 and well since in this case uh, so this is a paraboloid and it's an upside down paraboloid how do we know it's an upside down paraboloid because of the signs of the quadratic terms negative x squared and y squared otherwise it would have been opening up right so essentially we have this paraboloid in 3d like this <clears throat> So this, cir this circle right here that I have in blue, it's basically that circle right there. And well, it's kind of hard to make it a paraboloid. Nah. How do you know it's a paraboloid and not a cylinder? So in this case, so let's pretend I don't have the this this term so that looks like y equals 9 minus x squared so it looks like an upside down parabola so it's an upside down parabola in the z and x direction so in the x and z direction and it's also a parabola in the z and y direction which is really <clears throat> which is really this one right here. So yes, it's kind of hard to make it look like solid by hand. But, uh, huh. No, I think I'm just gonna use geometry. So, uh, okay. So from here, well, if we write an integral, I'm not going to write the integral in rectangular form. I'm going to go straight to the integral in, in cylindrical coordinates. So in this case, we're going to have a triple integral. Over the region, uh, let's call it Q. DV. And that's going to be the integral. Uh, in this case, recall that dv becomes r dz dr d theta. Well, so we need to look at the limits in the z direction. So that's going to define the height of the solid, really like the rooftop of the solid and the floor of the solid. So in this case, again, uh, it's bounded above by the paraboloid and bounded below by z equals to zero. However, this paraboloid right here, um, how about z equals to nine minus, I'm gonna factor out the negative sign, x squared plus y squared. But what's x squared plus y squared? Isn't that r squared? In cylindrical, both cylindrical and polar coordinates, well, so that z equals 9 minus r squared. So we can go about the limit from 0 to 9 minus r squared. All right, we got the limit in the z direction. What about r and theta? So that's where we use our projection in 2D. All right, so let's look at this circle. So the radius, so what's the radius? How is the radius varying in this case in the circle? So, uh, so we are, finding the volume of everything inside of that paraboloid, right? So that includes all the points inside of the circle. And well, the radius is, varies between zero and three. And what about the angle? In this case, they're not telling us, oh, just find the volume in the first octant or in the third octant, you know, whatever. No, in this case, since they're not telling us any additional conditions, so we're assuming it's covering or spanning the entire circle or region. And in this case, uh, how is, in this case, theta varying? From 0 to 2 pi, all right? From 0 to 2 pi. All right, so we have an integral in, in, uh, in cylindrical coordinates. Uh, even, even, in a, even in rectangular coordinates, this integral would have been doable because we don't have this radical to make it an impossible task. But uh, 
But trust me, the, the transformation into uh, cylindrical coordinates is going, to, is going to save our lives by a lot. Alright? Uh, let's see. Mm. 